Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to Basic Gospel. With Bob Christopher and Richard Piper, I'm Bob Davis, and we continue today in this great study through the book of Ephesians, and we're glad you're with us. Today, it's session 10, and if you need to catch up or to review any of the sessions, I'll go over all of that in just a few minutes. But right now, gosh, let's get going, guys, because it's been good so far, and I think it's going to be great today. It just keeps getting better and better and better as we we dive deeper into this great book, uh, this great book that Paul wrote, this letter. It was probably a circular that uh, went from city to city to city and then made it made its way back to Ephesus. And that's why it's it's considered to be the letter to the Ephesians. Uh, but today we're in chapter five and we're we're in the in the part of the book uh, where we're really getting practical. So uh, Paul has really explained what's happened to us through faith in Jesus Christ. Uh, we've have, we've been given every spiritual blessing in the heavenlies in Christ Jesus. We have redemption, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of God's grace. We've been adopted as sons. We've been sealed by the Holy Spirit. He's the deposit guaranteeing our eternal uh, redemption. Uh, all of that has taken place in Christ He then prays and says, I want uh, God to give you eyes to really see all of this so that you can know what you really have in Christ, the power of Christ who lives inside of you. And then he goes and gives us some uh, really insights as to what happens at that moment of salvation. We were dead spiritually, and God makes us alive. That is the work of grace. And we've been made alive to... Uh, walking, walk in these works that God has prepared uh, beforehand for us to walk in. And then he reveals a mystery, and that mystery is the fact that Jew and Gentile have now become one in Christ, that this gospel message wasn't just a Jewish message or a Gentile message. The grace of God was for all. The same grace that saved you and me as Gentiles is the same grace that saved those who were Jews. And so he's brought us together as one, as one. He tore down that wall of hostility and he's killed the hostility that was in our hearts so that we could actually love one another as brothers and sisters in Christ. And he, he, he gives us more information about that mystery and he ends with this great prayer in Ephesians 3 uh, that, we, that we would be strengthened with power in our inner man so that we would know the height and depth and length and breadth of God's um, eternal purpose and that we would experience the love of God, Uh, that it wouldn't just be knowledge, but we would actually experience it as we love one another. And then he moves, he kind of makes a a little pivot into chapter 4, and he says, okay, let me sketch out how this is going to look. So maintain the unity. Y'all are all unified in Christ. You are saved exactly the same way. You are bound together by the love of God. You're sharing life in this new covenant. So maintain that unity. And he's equipped the body with certain gifts, uh, apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastor teachers to build up the body so that we can mature and build ourselves up in love. And then he said, okay, you've become new in Christ. Leave the old behind. Uh, I mean, it died at the cross. You were crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, you live. Yet not you, but Christ lives in you. So leave that old behind and put on the new. So some of the things you need to leave behind is lying, falsehood, and stealing, and all of that. And he says, put on love. And here in chapter 5, uh, he's he's really going to hammer that point even more. And so today's lesson is remember who you are. And that's something that I tell my kids or, or have told my kids uh, all growing up. Every time they leave the house, kids, remember who you are. Yeah. Coleman, remember who you are. Caitlin, remember who you are. Mackenzie, remember who you are. Why? Because their identity, knowing who they are, Knowing what it means to be a Christopher uh, is going to shape the way you handle yourself out there in the world. Well, if you remember who you are as a child of God, it's going to shape how you handle yourself out there in the world. Indeed. And that's exactly what Paul is going to communicate to us 
in these eight verses. So let's dive in. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children. So what has happened to us through new birth? We've become children of God. Mm -hmm. So we are connected to God the Father. God has sent his spirit into into our hearts, and by that spirit we cry out, Abba, Father. So our identity is now derived from God, and so his love, his characteristics, everything about God should start shaping who we are. It, It makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, this isn't this isn't some outlandish idea, idea that you uh, try to imitate this behavior through your own human effort. This is simply understanding what God has made you, that you are now identified in this world as a child of God. And so he, his personhood, should start shaping everything about you. Just makes sense, doesn't it, Richard? Yeah, it does. And... and- you have to think about this first verse throughout the rest of the chapter. Yes. If you don't, you'll end up with a whole long list of better watch out, God's going to get you. But that's not what he's saying. Right. He's saying you are a child of God. Let that reality inform everything you do. In fact, let God begin to imitate himself through you. Yes. What, what an awesome mm. opportunity for a living life instead of by fear you're now doing it by faith instead of instead of abject horror you've got joy this changes everything yeah absolutely now this word imitate um we we see that a lot there's uh, uh there's this old illustration that we used to use tim stevenson used to use this all the time it's, it was a uh illustration about snapping and tapping Mm-hmm. And so somebody's sitting sitting on a park bench, and they have earphones in, and they're listening to music. Mm-hmm. And so they're snapping and tapping to the beat of the music. Well, somebody else comes up and sits next to them. They're not hearing the music, but they look at what this guy is doing, and then they try to imitate it. And it becomes a poor imitation. Why? Because they're not listening yes. to the music. So they can't keep up. They're not in rhythm. They're not in step. Their imitation is is lacking. So we, he's not saying for you to look at what God is doing and then try to imitate it. He's saying you're plugged into the music. You're a child of God. You're plugged in. And, and it really is more of being the image bearer, reflecting the very image of God, this music of his love and life that is flowing through you. Just let it be lived out. And that's what he's talking about here. As beloved children, that's who you are. So remember that. Remember who you are. You are a beloved child of God. Wow. And that's a great love to have. It's Basic Gospel, friends, and we're glad that you're with us for Session 10 of this Friday study series based on the Book of Ephesians. As I mentioned earlier, if you miss any of the sessions along the way, you can catch up any time at our teaching archive. It's at basicgospel.net slash teaching. Again, basicgospel.net slash teaching. Also, Basic Gospel is listener supported. Uh, Your gifts help us continue on the air every weekday to produce excellent series like uh, the one you're hearing here on Friday. Uh, So please help us continue with your gift this month. Just visit basicgospel.net uh, to make your gift. You can also use the Basic Gospel app or PayPal. And, uh, in Canada, our Canadian friends can go to basicgospel.net slash Canada to make your contribution. Now back to our study in Ephesians, and boy, it's a great one. Yes, it is, and boy, we've moved along quickly. We've done one verse so yes. far. Verse, yeah. oh boy. Uh, but thank goodness we're only doing uh, eight verses yes. today. So, um, so be imitators of God as beloved children and walk in love. There you go. That's it. Walk in love. Uh, What did we walk in before? Well, we walked in sin and death. Now, the world dolled that up and made us think it was something different, uh, but it was really sin and death. Uh, And we've been rescued from sin and death. We've been set free from the law of sin and death by the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. So now we're connected to the love of God. The love of God has been poured out into our hearts. We have the Holy Spirit teaching us, uh, strengthening, uh, strengthening us in our inner being so that we can understand the love of God and experience it in our day-to-day life. So he says, just walk in that. That's where you are. 
You're connected. You, you're you living in the love of God. You live loved by God every single day. So walk in that love as Christ has loved us and gave himself self up for us a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. There's no greater love than this that someone lay down his life for his friends. That's exactly what Jesus Christ did for us. And that was a demonstration of God's love. And that's what we walk in. And that becomes the controlling or the compelling force in our lives. That shapes how we think. That shapes how we choose and decide. That shapes how we relate one to another. As we walk in love, we're going to see that start controlling and shaping every area of our lives. And that's so important for us to understand. It's that inside out yes. reality. Yeah, I mean, this this is Paul's way of saying what the writer to the Hebrews said, fix your eyes on Jesus. There it is right there. Fix your eyes on Jesus and let all of this stuff be made true in you so that you can act it out to the rest of the world. Absolutely. So he goes on to say, but sexual immorality, this is verse 3, and all impurity or covetousness must not even be named among you as is proper among saints. So Paul is going to give some pretty stern warnings in these next two or three verses. Um, but it's important for us to understand why he's he's kind of pivoting right here, how he, why he's uh, taking us back to those old lifestyles. Well, he has just said for us to walk in love. Sexual immorality is not a walk of love. No. You are taking advantage of another person. You are marginalizing that person. You are objective, objectifying that person for your own sexual pleasure. That's why sexual immorality is not a, a part of this walk in the love of Jesus Christ. It's not something that fits with children of God. God has poured his love into our hearts, and he is enabling us to see people as he sees them. And when we see them as he sees them, then our attitudes and action toward, toward them really reflect his character mm -hmm. and not the character of the world. So sexual immorality is an image of the world. That's an action that bears the image of the world. We've been rescued from the world. We are now image bearers of the Lord Jesus Christ. So sexual immorality is not about love. Impurity, the same thing. It's not about walking in love. Covetousness is not about walking in love. No. If you're wanting what somebody else has, then you're just going to use them until you can get what they have for your own benefit. So, again, you're seeing people in a different way than God does. And yeah. it's so vitally important for us to allow God to elevate our thinking and, and enable us to see people in the same way that he sees them. Yeah. It changes everything. It does. When you, when you see these, the first two words, the sexual immorality and impurity, those are common words. We get our word pornography from that word for sexual immorality. Yes. Think about what that means and how unloving that is. Impurity is the opposite of catharsis. That's where we get the word catharsis. It's a cleansing. It it cleanses us from the inside out, usually dealing with grief or anger, something yeah. like that. This is the opposite of that. This impurity actually makes us dirty. It yes. doesn't cleanse us. And, and the covetousness, just that grasping for more, always more, always more, always more. This has nothing to do with a child of God. Yeah, that's the way of the world. Yeah. That's what you were rescued from. You used to, you used to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. You used to, that's just, this is where you walk. This is where you live. But no more. Why? No because more. Your, your old guy is dead, mm -hmm. and you've come alive, raised to walk in the newness of life. So he says, let there be no filthiness, nor foolish talk, nor crude joke, joking, which are out of place. But instead, let there be thanksgiving. So our attitudes begin to change when we know who we are, yes. and we know who <laughs> lives in us. So that's what, he's, that's what he's saying. You know, most of that filthiness and foolish talk and crude joking, why is that not a part of a walk 
uh, of love? Well, because usually it hurts and offends and, and makes fun of somebody mm-hmm. else. We're laughing at somebody else. Or trying to drag them into something yes, with us. Yes, absolutely. So it has no place as far as the love of God is concerned. For you may be sure of this, that everyone who is sexually immoral or impure or who is covetous, that is, an idolater, has no inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Now, he's talking about identity here. Mm -hmm. He begins this and says, your beloved children. So what do we know is true of the beloved children of God? That they have an inheritance. They have a place in the kingdom of God. That is guaranteed. We have been rescued out of darkness. We have been placed in light. We have been rescued out of the kingdom of Satan, and we have been placed into the kingdom of of Jesus Christ himself. So we have a place in the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. But those who are lost do not have a place. So he's saying, why imitate the lost world when you have God himself to be the one to imitate? Yeah. Um, you, You are identified with him. You are connected with him. Don't let your flesh drag you back. Keep your eyes focused on Jesus and and realize that you were there and you were lost. You were a son of disobedience. You were a child of wrath, but no more. Mm -hmm. So again, Paul is just simply saying, remember who you are Mm -hmm. and remember what you used to be and realize exactly what God has done in your life life yeah like like uh first corinthians 6 that's what some of you are or were Were. but now you've been cleansed you've been sanctified you've been set apart in christ remember who you are right so there are a lot of people that will look at this passage and say oh if you slip up and 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 fall fall into sexual immorality or covetousness you're going to lose your salvation that's not what paul is saying at all no you've been saved from that You have every spiritual blessing. You have God's spirit in you. That is the deposit guaranteeing your hope in him, your eternal inheritance. So he's just saying recognize that and then live that out in this this world. Why would you want to go back? That's not what God has called you to. That's all this is saying. So... Those have no inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. So let no one deceive you with empty words. You're going to have a lot of people trying to pull you back into the old way of life. That's just the way it is. Peter talked a lot about that. Um, You know, they're going to be myth because you don't want to join them in their lasciviousness. Uh, You used to. You yeah. used to hang out with the guys and, and do all the things that they did, but then you became a new believer, and you became a child of God, and you recognized that, that that's not you anymore. And so you chose not to hang out with them, and now they start to make fun of you. And no one likes to be made fun of. No one likes to be ostracized. And so you start getting tempted to maybe go back and say, hey, I'm still a good guy. Uh, you guys should still like me. You guys should still want me to be uh, at at your parties and those sort of things. And and they're saying, no, we don't. <laughs> we, yeah, we don't. We in, you're you're not one of us anymore. In you're fact, a child are, of God. Yeah, they are not your friends anymore. Yes, yes. They don't want to be your friends. Yeah. So remember that. Uh, re- remember that. And and this is this is the truth that will give you the solid foundation to embolden you to say no to those temptations that come at you from former friends, from the world, and and just say, hey, I'm connected to God. I'm walking in his love, and that's good enough for me. That is all I want. That's all I desire, and that's better than anything I've ever experienced anywhere else. So uh, let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Now, that phrase, sons of disobedience, we've already seen it in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2, 
we were all sons of disobedience, both Jew and Gentile. Mm -hmm. All of us were sons of disobedience. We were by nature children of wrath. But God's grace rescued us. Yes. God's grace saved us. God's grace changed our identity. We're no longer sons of disobedience. We're sons of obedience. We are children of God. So the wrath of God isn't coming upon us. Why? Because we belong to Christ. Mm -hmm. We're his beloved children. So he goes on to say, therefore, do not associate with them. That doesn't mean to not love them or not share the gospel with them. What it means is don't join them on their turf. Don't go back to those old places anymore. Mm -hmm. Uh, Many people do that. We see a lot of people that go free of alcohol and then they want to go back and and share the good news with their alcoholic friends and so they go to the bars and they go to the places where they used to hang out and six just months get swallowed right and they up. get swallowed up drinking just becomes a part of uh, of their uh practice again um so he's saying hey just just be aware don't go back to those those old places don't associate with them rather He says this, for at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. So here's the whole conclusion, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You were once darkness. So that's where you used to live. But now you're light in the Lord. So that's where you live, in the light. So simply walk as children of light. Remember who you are. It's really simple. It's really easy. Let's not complicate it. Yeah. Uh, and when we keep it simple, this Christian life becomes simple. Yeah, I mean, look at the mercy that, that Paul is using here. He says, I know you used to do this stuff. I used to do this stuff, right? We don't need to do this stuff anymore. I'm not blaming you. I'm not trying to pile guilt or condemnation on you. What I'm saying is we all know, because we've got the Spirit living in us, that there is a better way, a different approach. Let's follow that approach yes together as brothers and sisters in christ yeah so this is one of those verses that we need to really underscore star uh highlight memorize um because it's it's a verse that every time we go out every time we go out into this world it's a verse that reminds us of who we are Mm -hmm. and that's something that god does through his spirit all the time is he's reminding us who we are His spirit bears witness with our human spirit that indeed we are children of God. By his spirit, we cry out, Abba, Father. And so here's a passage the spirit of God is going to use in that same realm. You were once darkness. That's what you once were. But now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. It just makes sense. And there is a logic to uh, this this plan of God, and we see that logic unfolding. So God is always going to first establish us in our identity, mm-hmm. and then behavior is going to follow suit. That's always the pattern. Yes. So if you're struggling, let God take you back to the very identity that he's given you, that you will know with full assurance that you are beloved children of God, and that That's how you can walk by faith in him. Great stuff, Bob and Richard. Thank you so much. And friends, thank you for being with us today for this study in Ephesians. We hope you'll be with us every Friday. But if you miss any of the sessions along the way, you can access them in the archive anytime at basicgospel.net slash teaching. Again, that's basicgospel.net slash teaching. A quick reminder, too, that as you click donate at basicgospel.net or use any of the other methods uh, like uh, the Basic Gospel app or PayPal to make your gift, you're helping to make Basic Gospel possible every day to proclaim the truth of God's love and grace in the Lord Jesus Christ. To help, just click donate at basicgospel.net or, as I said, use the Basic Gospel app or PayPal. We would love for you to partner with us here at Basic Gospel. Keep in mind, too, that the listener line is always open for you. Got a question? Leave us a voicemail at 844-322-2742. Something comes up over the weekend, we'd love to hear about it on Monday. Now for Bob Christopher, for Richard Pfeiffer, and all this great ministry team, I'm Bob Davis with your invitation to be back again on Monday for Basic Gospel. We'll see you then. Have a great weekend, everybody.